In this video, I would like to show you one of the most essential skills that you have to get as an OSINT investigator, which is using search engines efficiently. Now I have an OSINT masterclass on how can you find someone's personal email address and personal phone number, and also using leaked databases to escalate and leverage your OSINT investigation. If you're interested in taking this course, you can subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get 25% discount, plus the CyberSuit OSINT Toolkit, plus two mini ethical hacking courses on how you can hack your own wireless access point, and how can you unlock vulnerable cars using radio frequency attack. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Saad from CyberSudo. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Not many of you watch the video and subscribe. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media for more OSINT and hacking content. Now I'll be posting OSINT tips on my Instagram and on my LinkedIn account. So make sure to follow me there. So what we are going to do in this video is how can you use Google dorks to narrow down our search results. So if you have the person name and you just type it in Google, you get maybe millions of search results. But if you have some other information that could be related to this person, then you can narrow down the search result by using the Google operators to filter your search results. So with that being said, let me show you examples on how you can do this. Now, since Google is one of the most popular search engines, we will be relying on Google for the purpose of this video and to make this video not very long. So if I just search for my name, for example, Saad Saraj, and hit enter, we can see that we get like 250,000 search results. And we can see that these are searches that are related to me. As you can see, I have posted something on Z security. I have a LinkedIn account. This is not my Facebook account, etc. But this is not a very efficient way because you don't want to look at 250,000 search results. So one of the most important Google operators that you can use to narrow down your search result is putting the text between two quotation marks. So in this case, if I put Saad Saraj within two quotation marks, Google will only look for this name. It's not gonna look for anything else. If I hit enter, we can see that right now we have 7,090 search results, which is way less than before, which is why it's very important to use the quotation mark. Now, by looking at the first search result, we can see that we have a LinkedIn account, which is my LinkedIn account, and we can see that the username is Saad Siraj. So what we can do is that we can tell Google to look for this username in the URL. And by doing this, we will see where this username is actually used. So if we say it, for example, in URL and then Saad Siraj, what this is going to do is that it's going to look for this username in the URLs. And we can see that we only have five search results. The only account that I have is this one, this LinkedIn account, the others are not mine, but we can see how much effort we have saved. This is why it's very important to use Google operators because it will narrow down your search result and it will save a lot of time. So another very important operator that you can use is called site, which will search in a specific site. So let's say that you are looking for Saad Siraj in Facebook. Instead of going to Facebook and search for Saad Siraj, which is something that you can do, you can actually use Google search engines to do so. But you may ask and say, hey, why would I even go and use Google if I have Facebook? I can just go to Facebook and then search for this person. And the answer is when you search for this person in Google, sometimes you will find some cached results. And if the person has deleted a post or a comment, then they will appear on the Google search engine. So in this case, I have specified the website that I want to look in and I want to search for the string Saad Saraj or the text Saad Saraj. I'm going to hit enter and we can see that we have 165 search results instead of 250,000. And we can see that we have the username Saad Saraj and we have other people who are named also Saad Saraj. Now, what I like to do is just to go to images and see what information I can find here, because sometimes you will find images of the people who posted something, for example, or maybe Saad Siraj had, has commented on pictures. So if I clicked on this MSI laptop and then clicked on here, it will open this post. And you can see that the post is actually not posted by Saad Siraj. You can see that it's maybe 
something in the comments and if I scroll down a little bit I can see that Saad Siraj is actually in here or I can say uh, control F and then Saad and I will be able to find him and we can see his comments now this is not something that this is something that you cannot see when you go to Facebook because the group could be private etc and this is why Google is very important and if you went to all for example you can go and see if they have posted something and see whether this page is actually cached so you can click on this dots and then click on here and this one is not cached so I can scroll down a little bit I can click on here this one is cached I can open the cached version so if they have deleted their comment you can find it actually in here you can see that this is the mobile version if I scroll down we can see that he have mentioned somebody called Omar Sharaf so this is why it's very important to use Google search engine or the Google operators now if you would like to search in multiple websites what you can do is just say site and then the domain name or site and then the domain name in this case I said look for Saad Saraj in Twitter or in Facebook and when I hit search I can see that I have 140 search results now if we looked at Saad Saraj in Twitter for example I'm gonna hit enter and scroll down we can see that we only have like four search results we can see that somebody here like mentioned me or did something if I clicked on the post or uh, the URL it will redirect me to the profile of the person and I can search in his profile where he mentioned me as you can see he mentioned me right here or I can open the cached version as we have done before which will make it very e easy for me as you can see here's the tweet that he did to mention me now the second very very important Google operator that you need to use is the and so I'm gonna say Saad Siraj and OSINT so it will only give me search results of this name and this keyword so since I do OSINT videos then it's going to show me where this person has appeared with the keyword OSINT and as you can see we have 330 results now if I remove this and only looked for Saad Siraj we have more than 7,000 results now the way you can use this is by adding the person's name and then add the city or the country where he lives or she lives and therefore you will get only information that are related to these two keywords for example I can say Saad Siraj and and Germany I don't know if I'm gonna get anything but I will just try it and as you can see we can only see that we have five search results we can see this is my blog and this is something something that's related to me as well I found this method very very effective because if you have a very popular name like John Smith then you need to narrow down the search results because if you didn't do this you're gonna waste a lot of time the last thing that I would like to show you is the Google hacking database and this database contain many Google doors that you can use to find certain information for example you can find publicly accessible cameras you can find maybe databases you can find usernames passwords everything using the Google Lurks now in this example I would like just to show you a demonstration and here are all the new recently added Google Dorks you can basically just copy it and test them on your own and in this example I'm just going to look for online accessible cameras and one of the Google Dorks that I've tried is actually this one so if we have copied this Google Dork and put it in Google we can see that it's actually very simple we're only looking for view.shtml in the URL and the keyword camera so let's do this and here are the search results and if we open this one for example we can see that this is an access uh, camera I believe and we can wait a little bit and see that this is actually a live camera that we were able to see just by using this Google Dork and you don't have to enter any password or username to view this camera and as you can see we are able to view the footage of this camera without entering any username and password and here is a challenge for you if you were able to geolocate this image or this video 
then please tell me in the comment section and how you have done it. I'm very interested in this. So that's it for this video. If you liked it and learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll appreciate this a lot. And Google will just uh, recommend my videos to other people who are interested in OSINT. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.